So this is part one in a series about snake bite myths and misconceptions, and then uh, hopefully the actual facts surrounding snake bite, and then also uh, we'll get into first aid for snake bite. Uh, one myth that seems to be pretty popular is that juvenile or baby snakes are unable to control how much venom they inject. And that's actually completely not true. All snakes are capable of controlling their venom. And there is a little bit of controversy over exactly how snakes are able to control how much venom they inject. But everybody pretty much agrees that there is some way in which they can control their venom. And juvenile snakes have been uh, shown to have a more toxic venom than the adults. So theoretically it would take a smaller amount of it to have the same effect. However, it's also true that just because they're very small and their fangs are very small, it's difficult for a juvenile snake to inject uh, a significant amount of venom, and it's unlikely that it would uh, be able to envenomate a person effectively. Uh, another thing uh, that sometimes is tossed about is that snake venoms are kind of simple, and you'll hear people say things like, all the lapids have a neurotoxic venom, uh, lapids being the cobra family, or that all vipers have a myotoxic or cytotoxic toxic venom, and really that's just too simplistic. All snake venoms are really complex. They have a lot of different enzymes and toxins and proteins in them, and there's an exception to every rule of biology, and this is true for this case as well. Um, there's some cobras that can have a lot of tissue damage associated with their bites. There's some rattlesnakes that have a lot of neurotoxins in their venom, and it's really just impossible to simplify things that much. So. There's no hard and fast rule. Every snake is an individual, and every person is an individual, so people are going to react uh, differently, possibly, to any bite. The question we're asked frequently is, what is the most dangerous snake, or what is the most deadly snake? And unfortunately, there's really no good answer to that. The snake that kills the most people in the world is the saw-scaled viper, which is a small snake, um, about yay big, and uh, it has a large range, uh, different subspecies found throughout uh, parts of northern Africa, through Arabia, and all the way through Afghanistan and Pakistan, parts of India. So it has a very large range um, in uh, many areas in that part of the world. Uh, people may be very far from a medical facility, so it takes a long time to uh, reach a hospital. And unfortunately, the anti-serum that is made for that snake, some of it doesn't seem to work that well. So there's a lot of complicating factors that go into making that snake the most deadly. Um, the most toxic snake in the world uh, that has been tested is the uh, Deboya sea snake, which is found off the coast of Australia. Uh, it lives in the ocean, so it doesn't bite people very often. And uh, you have to remember that when people talk about toxicity, what they're talking about is LD50s. And all that means is that it's the smallest dose that kills half of the test mice in the population. So, say you have 100 mice, the smallest amount of venom that will kill 50 of them is your LD50. So, a lower LD50 is a more toxic venom. But, of course, people are not mice, and so that type of information really only has a limited amount of use. You can't necessarily say that the snake that kills the most mice is going to kill the most people. It doesn't have any correlation. So. LD50s are interesting as a research tool, but they really have um, no bearing on how dangerous any particular snake is going to be. The saw-scale viper is not in the top ten as far as toxicity goes when you look at LD50s. And uh, what we tend to tell people is that the snake you've got to worry about is the one that you're working with, because that's what you have to deal with at the moment. Another question that people ask us frequently is, um, or well, more of an expectation that people have is that if they're bitten by a venomous snake, it's over. They're going to die immediately or very quickly, and that there's no way you would survive. And that's not true. Um, most snake bites, actually, are survivable. You've got to remember that the snake has venom in order for it to kill and, uh, or capture and kill its prey. So it really doesn't want to use its venom on a defense situation like biting us. So the snake is going to use the least amount of venom that it thinks it needs to to get you out of the picture. And frequently that may be no venom at all. Um, the statistics on dry bites are um, 
probably not the best because we can't test every single bite, but we think somewhere between 30 and 50 percent of snake bites in the field, so an accidental bite when you step on a snake or something like that, 30 to 50 percent of the time the snake won't inject any venom at all. And then of course it's going to go up to, from there based on the snake's perception of what kind of danger it's in. But in any case, most studies have shown that defensive bites usually use less venom than predatory bites because the snake has to eat in order to survive and it doesn't want to waste its venom on you. Having said that, of course, some people do die from snake bite. In the United States, snake bite deaths are very rare, um, probably between zero and five per year. And most people who are killed by snake bites here in the United States are killed because they are either unable or refuse to get proper medical attention. Uh, if you go to the hospital and are treated by a physician, it's very, very unlikely that you would die from a snake bite in the United States. In other countries, the situation varies based on the quality of medical care and how far away people are from medical care and how available antivenom is to the general populace. And if healthcare is far away or not the best quality or antivenom is very difficult to get, then those are the things that increase the number of snake bite deaths in a particular country or region. But even so, even in those countries, most snake bites still are survived by the victims. It's just that uh, the, the ones that would need medical attention in order to survive sometimes aren't able to get it.